Welcome back. It's turning out to be quite a pleasant morning. Lots of earnings reaction on the street. In fact, most of the counters that have been making big moves this morning are on back of earnings. Uh, talking about earnings, Zenzar Tech also reported numbers uh, yesterday. And we have with us Manish Tandon, Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director of Zenzar Tech joining us. Manish, uh, good morning. Thank you very much, Mr. Tandon, for joining us uh, this morning. First up, how do you feel? Uh, you've reported numbers. It's a little bit of a mixed bag from the way we look at it. But take us through those earnings. No, I feel we feel very, very good about uh, our earnings, uh, except for uh, one particular area in our business, which is uh, the high tech uh, uh, vertical. Uh, we have uh, done very well. I think uh, this being a seasonal quarter, it's better to compare year over year performance. We have done um, about 18% growth in South Africa, about 12% growth in UK about 13% growth in banking and financial services uh, sector, even uh, consumer and retail has uh, grown 7.7%. All these are year over year numbers. And our uh, profit has uh, actually, our PAT has grown 108% uh, as compared to last, uh, last quarter. So we are uh, overall pleased uh, with the progress that uh, we are making. Unfortunately, because of the deep, wide and deep furloughs uh, in the tech uh, sector, a lot of this has been washed away. And as uh, you all know, we have a significant exposure to the tech sector. Um, and hence, um, we are seeing uh, uh, this downdraft. But otherwise, uh, even the order bookings, etc., cetera, are up 30% year over year. So uh, we are pretty pleased with our performance. So, Tanan, let's take this uh, one at a time, and I want to talk about your margins because those have actually come in pretty uh, decent, if that's the right word to use. Uh, lots of operational efficiency as well that's at play. Uh, going ahead in terms of an outlook on margins, can we expect an uptick on margins? Because there's only that much more you can push in terms of operational efficiencies. So, what I want to understand is, would you be getting better deals with better margins? Because that's exactly really what happened in 2022 as well, when the industry as whole was seeing low lower margins, but better business? I, I have always believed throughout my career that uh, margins is much more about execution than uh, about the price at which you are selling. Uh, you have to price to the market and execute to margin. And uh, that is what we have been doing over the last uh, four quarters. Um, and uh, to your question, uh, we want to maintain mid-teen margins. Currently, we are higher than uh, our expectation of mid-teen margins, which is a good position to be. It allows us to invest in business growth uh, going forward. Mr. Tandon, uh, is deal making a, a concern at this stage? And it, this, of course, we've seen industry-wide as well. So it's not very specific to Zenzar alone here. Uh, the value of your deal wins uh, was actually, or rather is more than the total revenue in dollar terms. Uh, is conversion of deals into revenue slow at this stage? No, actually, uh, we are very conservative in reporting our uh, order bookings. Actually, we op uh, we uh, we report our order bookings based on the SOWs signed. So it is not about uh, it is not about uh, you know um, saying that okay, potentially this deal is a framework deal which will give us a uh, hundred million over five years. We don't do that. And our book to bill ratio uh, typically is 1.2 um, or so, and uh, which is what uh, we are seeing this year also. Deal making environment remains the same. Uh, I think uh, Q3, um, Q3 or this uh, uh, Christmas, uh, December, November, December quarter is not very good for deal making because pretty much from Thanksgiving to uh, first week of New Year's, people are away. Uh, and yet, uh, we have seen good uh, good growth numbers as far as deals are concerned. Talking about uh, revenue and deals, uh, it, this is the time when clients are firming up their budgets uh, for the full year. How mm -hmm. have your conversations been with clients? Uh, what is the demand picture looking like? I mean, on-ground reality. I don't think the demand picture is looking any different from what it was in 2023. Uh, I think, uh, if anything, uh, whatever reports I've been reading and what I've been talking to clients, uh, it is going to be a tougher 
uh, year as compared to even 2023 is what uh, I am being being told uh, by our clients and the various analysts that I'm talking to. And then what does that mean for business? Uh, if it is going to be tougher, and I'm so glad you, you, know, you say this as it is, because the markets have been getting excited, expecting that the worst is behind the IT sector, and an uptick should be expected, completely ignoring the fact that the U.S. also goes in election next year, and we're still not uh, done with the recession talk in the U.S. If demand picture is not going to see a material difference, operational efficiencies and execution is already at its peak, where do you think growth for the sector, for your company will come from? from in F525 then? What could be the triggers that we should be tracking now? Yeah, I think uh, I would not comment on the industry, uh, but I would comment on uh, Zensar. And uh, our strategy has been that we uh, have offered a whole new slew of services which are doing very well in the market. What that does is it increases the addressable spend that we can go after. So even though the market size might be shrinking, the addressable spend for companies like Zensar is increasing, and that has been our strategy to counter uh, the downdraft in the industry. Of course, we are 600 million odd in revenue, so it's easier for us to do it than some of the larger players who have billions of dollars in, in revenues. Uh, Mr. Tandon, high tech and the top five clients, uh, which of course contribute to your top line, uh, some brokerages believe could be a little bit of a drag for the company. Give me a sense of outlook into the next quarter and F525 as well with regard to the high tech vertical and your big three, four clients uh, that pull in the revenue for you. Uh, I uh, don't want to comment on individual clients, but top five has come down uh, and uh, we are, uh, and obviously a lot of those accounts were in the high tech, uh, high tech sector because that is the only sector which has uh, uh, degrown. Um, outlook, uh, as I said, the overall outlook remains the same as 2023, uh, as far as high tech is concerned. In fact, I was just reading last week that even Google has, uh, Google has let go of uh, a lot of people, 1200 or 12,000, I don't remember. So um, I, I won't say that the prognosis uh, is, uh, is very good uh, for the sector. Uh, and it's not going to be different. The only point is, have we bottomed out or not? And it's very difficult to comment on, um, on that um, as of this stage. Uh Mr. Tandon, another quick one. Uh, give us a picture of uh, employee and headcount. I mean, that clearly usually is a lead indicator for your sector. How is headcounts looking? Are you hiring at this stage? Uh, what do attrition stand at? Uh, just a little more light on that would be useful. Yeah, yeah attrition is only 12%. Um, it has come down from 13.1% uh, last quarter. Uh, our uh, Glassdoor rating as a company has uh, gone um, is, is the highest. Uh, it's more than four. Uh, we added uh, 565 uh, gross additions for 565. Net additions were slightly uh, slightly negative, and uh, that is in line with uh, how the revenue has been doing. Our utilization has been going up, and uh, now most of the new demand that is coming in is being filled not from existing uh, bench resources, but uh, from hiring uh, uh, new people and bringing in uh, fresh talent. So Tandon, uh, just one quick last question, if I can you know, ask you in terms, you've of course been very candid and told us uh, the way things are at this stage, but uh, in terms of geographies, uh, you know, your US business is down about 3.6%, UK Europe is off by about 2.5%. Any new geographies that you're focusing on? Is emerging geographies something that the company is uh, bullish on? I mean, internally, what are those conversations is what I really want to know. I know you're not the sort to overcommit and underdeliver, but just give us a sense of, uh, you know, internally, what is the plan? Internally, the plan is uh, I, uh, last quarter, uh, which is Q2, we started the healthcare and life sciences verticals. Uh, healthcare and life sciences vertical. Uh, so we are building out our team uh, team there. Um, so that is one area that uh, I am very excited about. Uh, if you look at uh, most of the companies, 
uh, they have shown uh, a growth in the high uh, in the healthcare and life sciences uh, vertical uh, and i have a significant background in that vertical so i'm very excited about it as far as geography penetration is concerned uh, we are doing very well in south africa we have a double digit market share there uh, we are doing pretty well very well in uk and uh, in in europe uh, i mean south africa the volume growth was 18% if the currency had uh, uh, been stable, we would have seen 18% year over year growth. Uh, and uh, Europe, it is 18% uh, in uh, stated currency, but about 12% in volumes. So um, we are, uh, I am not too, uh, not too uh, eager about penetrating newer geographies. Um, basically, we will go where our clients uh, take us. So if a client says, for example, uh, there is a client who wanted us to start a center in Colombia. And uh, last quarter, we just did that. Uh, we started a new Colombia center with uh, about uh, 65, 70 people. So um, we will go where our clients want us to go. All right, Mr. Tan, congratulations and good luck with business going ahead. That is Enzar Management uh, charting out the, terror, the road ahead for the company, talking about how they have actually uh, managed to grow geographies like South Africa. They are focusing on life science and health healthcare, like Mr. Tannen indicated. Uh, numbers were largely in line with expectation, but of course, some concerns will remain as the demand outlook is still not showing a material impact, uh, not just for the company, but for the industry as whole. In the meantime, the markets are looking good. It's a pretty solid uh, 